So hello, I am Lucy Renshaw and I'm actually just finished training, so hence the sweatiness. This is where I train full time and I do judo. I started judo when I was eight and I'm 26 now. So I've gone from school games, finals to the Olympic Games. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. What about your journey? Um, so yeah, hi, I'm Alice. Um, I play water basketball. It is six years now um, of water basketball, which is pretty crazy. Um, I This is my first school game finals um, and I'm going to be uh, obviously water basketball representing England Green. Very cool. So have you got some questions for me that I can answer? Yeah, so I was kind of wondering what was your journey into the sport like and kind of into the more performance side of it? I'm sure you weren't going for the Olympics age to eight, so... Yes, yeah, so I, when I was younger, like I loved all different sports. And I remember I used to say to my mum and dad, oh, I want to go to the Olympic Games, but I didn't know what in and I wasn't especially good in any sport. I just really wanted to, I thought it was super cool. And then I started judo in primary school where my club coach came in and he um, did like a six week taster session and I loved it. And honestly, the main reason I loved it is because I thought, oh, like I can beat up my brother here if I carry on doing judo so I was like this is cool and then at the age of around 15 I got onto the England team and that meant that I was going international and um, competing around Europe and things like that and then at the age of 17 I moved to Warsaw and that's where I'm based now and I have been since I was 17 and that's where I train full-time and that's how I go international training and obviously get selected for the Olympic Games. Uh, what was your experience at Tokyo? Like, I've kind of heard it from a Paralympic perspective, but not from the Olympics. I think it was a really cool experience. Um, I went to Rio Olympics as a training partner and I got to experience like the whole thing without the nerves of competing. So that was really cool because I was in the village, I was in the um, in the judo hall, but I wasn't competing. So I wasn't nervous about competing. And when I got there in Rio, I was like, oh my God, like I want to be here in Tokyo competing. So going into Tokyo, of course, it was really nerve wracking, but every single competition I do, I get nervous and it's really nerve wracking, but it was just, it was a surreal experience just stepping onto like the judo mat at the Olympics. Um, so yeah, kind of following on from that, that sounds like a really kind of cool experience in getting the Rio and then Tokyo. What would be your advice for someone going to their first kind of multi-sport village type event, so from these school games? Yeah, so I think school games was my first multi-sport event as well. And when I got there, I was like, oh my God, like this is so cool. And it can be a little bit overwhelming, but I think you've got to really enjoy the experience and don't take it too seriously because if you go in there and take it too seriously and don't have too much fun, you'll come home from the games and be like, oh, that was it. Like, so I think you really need to go in there and just be open to like, if you get like pins or stuff like that, you can switch it with people, talk to people from different sports and see what they're doing and get to know them. And then um, just be open to enjoy the experience. And then of course, when you compete, I'm sure that you'll do great. And, but just don't worry if you don't do great because it is a first games experience and you shouldn't put too much expectation on yourself because you don't want to you don't want to go into the school games thinking that you have to go there perform a medal you should just go into the thinking that you're just going to have fun and then hopefully if a medal comes or you perform well that's that's just a bonus really isn't it for you yeah definitely um kind of how have you overcome adversity I saw on Instagram that you've had some injuries um kind of how have you overcome that I think it's part of sport so in judo um there's certain injuries that many people get um shoulders especially knees and have I've had both of them injuries and I think things happen in sports and my coach is really good to say that you have to pretend like you're on um, a mountain or a cliff and you're climbing up this mountain and it doesn't you can't just go straight up like this and get to the top like that's impossible there is going to be bits where you go down a little bit to go up higher to go down again or to go straight and that's fine like I think as long as you can focus and so for me now, I'm injured right now and I've had surgery and I'm four weeks post-surgery now. But I think these four weeks, I've not just stopped training and been upset and been dwelling on things. I've been really focusing on the gym, which for me, 
um, gym is the hardest part of sport for me. I don't really enjoy doing weight training, but I've been really focusing on it. I'm really putting time into gym, which I couldn't really do before. So I think just having a focus on something and having goals um, outside of me doing judo, that's, that's really helped me. And yeah, so again, kind of leading off that, I had two major surgeries this season. Um, how do you kind of deal with that not being able to train at the list? I think it is hard and you can be upset that you've had surgeries. And I think as long as you now have a focus um, coming back and you you don't have to think sometimes injuries are not a bad thing like like I just said you can focus on something else so you can focus on your weak points or the things that you're not as strong as so I think as long as you have goals going forward from your injuries um you will do well so an example when I came back from my knee injury I started back at a very low level at um, a domestic event and then I went international but again a lower level and I just built my way up and eventually I got my best medal that I've ever had in my career so I think as long as you're focused in your mind and you're um, keeping negative and trying to keep away from, oh, I'm injured, I can't do anything, I think you'll get through it very well. What injuries did you have? Um, so kind of power sport's really different because we've all got our own conditions. So I think if you've had any like proper injury injury, um, I just dis- partially dislocated my wrist and my elbow um, while trying to get the ball. That was in 2019. Mm-hmm. I came back two weeks later. I probably should have had more time out, but with my condition, I just look at it anyway. So I was like yeah. sitting around. I did. <laughs> this season, I had two jaw surgeries. So I had basically what a lot of people have done with their knee. So I had the cartilage taken out and I had a okay. plant, and then I had a, two scopes. So I had the replacement on one side and the scopes on both. Um, I think that's it. I think the major one, I learned how to walk again during lockdown. That was mm-hmm. a bit of a surprise. Wow. So I woke up with, I couldn't feel my feet. I, so I had disabilities beforehand. Then I woke up, couldn't feel my foot. Um, then it progressed to my legs. So I learned how to walk again. Um, um, with basketball, we didn't really have a 2020 or 21. Um, our first matches were, were September last year, um, okay. which was a bit weird coming back because we had just had nothing and we weren't allowed, we weren't allowed to go to each other. For last year and we weren't allowed contact until June um, because COVID was that I think I'll probably forget them I had to see a medical form for a few yeah. weeks and I was like oh this is going to be a very long document yeah um, I think kind of moving on to the outside of athleting is there anything that you're really like passionate about um, so yes yeah, so even though it's a bit alongside um, me doing judo I also coach judo um, me and my boyfriend have our own judo club so we coach people from the age of four and I think our oldest is only 18 so we, I really enjoy that because I feel like sometimes being an athlete you can get um, really of course, you have to focus on, well, I have to focus on judo, but I don't want that to be my only focus. I feel like sometimes I can give back to the sport a little bit. And just like seeing all the little kids and just they watch me online and on the TV and they come and watch some domestic competitions. And it's just so nice to think that like I can inspire the children. But I also study physical education as well. And I really enjoy that. So they're all a little bit linked, but um, yeah, I study too. Cool. Um, so kind of on that how do you manage your studies around your own now um I think having good communication is key um my lecturers are aware of my situation they know um that I'm away traveling in the country and I'm out miss some lectures because of that but I think me having good communication is really important so I've always messaged them to say this is my program and if anything changes I'll let you know in advance 
um, and they're really happy to help me. So when I go away out the country, they'll give me the work that I'm going to miss that week or they do some recording lectures. So I don't actually miss too much, but I think it's really good to have a balance. So when I come home from training, I rest, I recover, and then I make set times to do university work as well. So I don't just wing it. I don't just go with the flow. Probably every Sunday night or Saturday night, I make a timetable for the week and I make sure I stick to that timetable because I know sometimes after training, I can come home and be like, I don't want to do nothing all day. I'm exhausted. Like, I'm sure you know how it feels. So I think just having good balance, being quite strict with the timetable and having good communication with my lecturers, they're the three key things to, um, at the minute, everything's really balanced and both my studies and my judo are going quite, quite good. I think you kind of touched on this, but how do you kind of manage having a social life? How do I manage my social media? Like having a social life outside of... Oh, social media. life. Um, so it's hard. It is really hard. I mean, judo is quite a difficult sport. I don't know about basketball, but there's no seasons in judo. So from January to January, we're training. And I basically have two weeks off for Christmas and sometimes not even that. So this year I'm competing on the 21st of December. So I'll just have the week off after that. And then if we have a big event, the World Championships, we'll have a week or two off after that. So probably during the whole year, um, if you're not injured, I'll have about three weeks off. But then in between all that as well, we do get some weekends off where we can just go home, see our family and friends because... I live about an hour and a half away from my family. So I make sure, because it's super important that you keep in contact with everyone and you still have fun outside because although you're really dedicated to your sport, um, sport isn't the end of everything. Like it's not, there's, there's something after sport as well. So it's really important to keep in good contact with friends and family, especially for your mental health too. But I think, I make sure to speak to my friends and family every single day. I FaceTime them. I keep in contact with probably everyone. And when I do have spare time, I make sure that I'm not just being lazy and sitting at home and get staying in bed. I get out and I do things and I visit loads of friends, visit loads of family. But it is hard, like it is really hard. And I, yeah, I do miss quite a lot of events and I'm sure you have as well already. But I think judo I won't be doing judo forever so I can I have all my spare time in a few years when I retire yeah I think we we train our club training is uh Saturday afternoon so it's um it's, yeah it clashes what was that? that so I bet you Saturday afternoon that clashes with a lot of your friends and your family's things that they're doing yeah um it's kind of worked in my favor for some things um admittedly but um it's like even trying to go to the football and stuff like that it, it's pretty hard yeah um how do you deal with the negativity in sport kind of whether that's your own emotions or from other people or kind of the general vibe of things so it's that is hard it's a good question because so we have like judo forums and um british judo like on facebook pages and stuff like that and eight times or nine times out of ten it's really positive like it's super positive and you have people tagging you in things and wishing you well and um a lot of people sometimes are always there to support the good times and they're not as many if things are not going so good but I think you don't what people are writing because some people do write negative things on social media and some people even tag me in things like I say I've just lost at an event I'll be tagged in a post saying oh that was terrible and I'm thinking yeah I'm, I know that I'm down in the dumps about it you don't have to tell me but I do think that their opinion isn't important like they're just watching they don't know what's going on they don't know how hard you train um, and how hard you work so I think if they did know me as a person and if they did see me training every single day as hard as I'm training they probably wouldn't comment like that um, and there was one time where there was a comment about the British Centre where we're training now to say that I think it said something about we just get given everything and um, we don't earn it and um, a few of us wrote um, back to the comment which I wouldn't advise to do but as soon as I wrote back to the comment they all messaged me individually to say I'm sorry no I didn't mean that I'm really sorry so I think 
a lot of the time on social media, people do it just for maybe to say, hi, like this, look at me, I can write about these people. So I do think sometimes it's not even true what they're saying. They just want to share their opinion. Um, but I do think that if the person knew you 100% as a person, they probably wouldn't say what they were saying. So I try not to look at very many things because it can get you down and it can put you in a bad way. But if you do see them, I just know in my head that I train hard every day. I work very, very hard. I've not been given anything. I train hard for it. So I deserve what I get. Or I like, for example, you deserve to be at the school finals. So whatever people say, it really isn't important. So I think you froze for a moment there, but that was oh, okay. yeah, really interesting. I think there's definitely been comments that have gone around in the basketball around the various performance centres. Um, I just tend to kind of sit back on Facebook and not engage with them. <laughs> it's definitely get a the bit, best thing like, to do. There's some people who get very, very passionate. Yeah, there's mm. some people who get very passionate about the sport, and I think you've probably experienced it in judo as well as kind of the profiles being raised that people liked it how it was and that wouldn't have been with a lot of people in the sport um wheelchair basketball is so heavily male weighted as well so I'm not sure if you've seen that we have been our women's premier league which is meant to be pro um and that caused huge backlash because people were like oh why aren't they investing in the men's game which was all they so it's kind of so it happens in other sports if you get what I mean yeah um, and I think that other people can be as kind of mean I have got a list that's why I keep looking down no it's okay but I do I do think that in every sport it happens like you've got to remember and understand that it's not just you like no one's aiming at Alice it's everyone like I think every sport there is then people that will write nasty comments but you literally are doing the right thing by not engaging and not letting it get you down because you know that you're working hard you're trying hard so their opinions the negative opinions doesn't really matter um, I kind of on a more upbeat note in your personal and sporting life so my best achievement in judo I am the only British person to get to four grand slams well not four I've got to seven grand slam finals but won four of them um so I'm the only British judo to do that and I'm also the only um person in British judo to get a European medal at every age category so I'm really happy that because sometimes if you do so well when you're young you can't continue that all the way through to senior level um or so you do either better younger or maybe older but I've got a European medal at cadet junior under 23 and senior so I think I'm really proud to be at every stage I know I've completed something that I really wanted to complete and get a European medal and then I think outside of judo it, my biggest achievement probably would be being able to balance so many things I think it's really hard and some people struggle to um, give 100% to one thing or 100% to another thing also so sometimes if people give 100% to the sport they can't like give everything to the university or the studies but I be, because of them key factors that I told you before about time management and um, having a balance and being a little bit strict, I think probably my biggest achievement outside of judo is doing well in other things, not just one thing here, one thing there. So I'd say that. What what would you say is your biggest achievement so far? Um, I don't know. I think it's really, really split. And I'm not sure if my sporting achievements would like be the traditional ones. So I spoke out about sexism in the sport age there. Selection for me was huge. Um, I I would have made to the decision that happened. Um, was I mean in my junior career to to get to this point um, mm -hmm. that I am going to school games and um, I'm going to experience and I think. Also, my first match back after my first operation for season was also my Div 2 debut in the sport. Um, wow. So I threw myself in the deep end. 
Um, and I think, I think personally, um, I do quite a lot of advocacy stuff. So I'm on the Girl Guiding Youth panel and also Select Youth Board. Um, and they're an organisation that does um, getting girls and young women into STEM. I'm probably talking to Priti Patel about how we need to have good education in schools and how we need to have a focus on PSHG um, and stuff that isn't English and maths and uh, helping shape the domestic violence bill is probably my proudest achievement. Saying that wow. is <laughs> thinking. Well, yeah. you definitely should be proud of that. That is really, it sounds really amazing. Um, just a little question. What is a Grand Slam? I don't follow judo, so. Okay, so in judo, we have the major events, which is World Championships, European Championships, and then Olympic Games. But to get to the Olympic Games, you need to be the highest on the ranking list. So the top 22 on the ranking list go to the Olympic Games. So to climb that ranking list, you fight in Grand Slams. So it's the next competition under the three majors. And the Grand Slams are worth the highest points. So winning a Grand Slam, I would get a thousand points. So I'll go higher on the world ranking list. So they're like, if you know what a Grand Slam in tennis is, it's a bit similar to that. Okay, cool. That that makes more sense. Yeah. How do you get focused for both training and competition? Uh, I know there's sometimes that I will just be waking up at 6 a.m. and I'll get for my first match and I'll just be a bit outly. Yeah. I think it's hard sometimes. Some days I wake up and think, oh no, I can't do it today. It's really hard. Like, but you've got to do it. So as much as you, if you keep telling yourself, I'm tired, I'm not feeling that up for it today, um, you've still got to do it. You're still going to compete. So I think no matter how I feel in the morning when I wake up on competition, I know I've got to compete and I've got to compete my best today. So I try not to give myself negative thoughts and think, oh, I'm tired today. Oh, I didn't sleep too good today. I try and switch that around and think, I've trained hard. I've ate well. I've made my weight well. I'm ready to train. Like I'm ready to compete and I've been competing well. So that's what I try and change it around to not think, oh, I'm tired. I try and tell myself all the positive things that's happened this week rather than the negative things. But to focus during competition, um, we have we have about five fights in a day. So in between each fight, there's about an hour recovery. So I just listen to music. I take myself off. I just really try and think in my head my game plan and how I'm going to win my next fight. And then I also speak to my coach a lot. So I think sitting with my coach and confining my coach and him just going through what we're going to do next and some maybe video analysis and stuff like that, it can really make me just focus on the event I'm doing. Him. and the same for training really I try to have set goals each session so I'm not just coming onto the judo mat and thinking oh I'll go with the flow today I try and each session have some goals that today I want to do this this and this so I feel like that can really focus me and give me an aim for each session yeah I think that's something that I just need to bring into my training and kind of coming back after COVID I think I we went into COVID I was 14 and then coming out 16 and suddenly kind of you've lost kind of so many years um and kind of that serious to my training I think is something that I need to bring in that was really helpful thank you no problem uh, it's a random one but what is your favorite food to have at competition so in judo you have to make your weight so I fight normally on the Saturday but on the Friday evening I weigh in so the Friday is not much food and not much drink because you're weighing in that evening but then as soon as I've weighed in I love 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 spaghetti bolognese or carbonara so I get some carbs in and the day of my competition I it's not my favorite food but it's just now a food that I will have every single competition I'll have scrambled egg on toast and that's my go-to breakfast and then throughout my competition I have things like bananas energy drinks harry bows and stuff like that and then after my competition I always treat myself so we go out for some like food I probably wouldn't normally eat on a day-to-day -day basis and I love pizza and burgers and stuff like that but yeah my go-to meal after weighing is definitely spaghetti bolognese or carbonara what is yours? I think oh I really like Danya but my family don't really <laughs> I think because our, our our competitions are such a varied time yeah so there's some, some that I have six weekends in a row that I have matches of some variety sometimes in three different competitions 
and then there's some times that I won't I'll have one match a month um and we also do the weird Christmas stuff so I think I've definitely played on the last weekend before Christmas and the first oh, one back after New Year just because the whole thing's be cheap so we tend to play um so I think I do love the Christmas dinner I really like stuffing in your oh, pudding. yes I like that too <laughs> but it's working out when I because it's kind of I, I've trained all summer which has been nice um some people normally have a break but because I hadn't played much in the last season I was like there's training sessions to go to let's just go because I don't know like if I'm gonna have to have another surgery or another bit of me breaks um so yeah lasagna though I would have that every day <laughs> I, I, I think I could also eat lasagna every day I do really like that too <laughs> How do you manage coming off a competition, like coming out of a competition, like coming off that high um, yeah. from competing? Well, I think it's super, super important to have that high. Like um, sometimes people can get straight back into training and forget what's just happened. But I think it is really important to take that high into training with you and be really confident with it. So when I'm competing and I'm winning competitions, I come home and I'm, I am happy, like I get into training and I'm happy. And I just, I think in my head, like I've done so well, like take this into training, carry on going. And I think by doing that, it makes you have really good training sessions. Of course, you're going to have some training sessions where you're just like, what went on there? Why was this so bad? But I think if you keep thinking back to that competition that I did, I did so well, I played so well, I did this, this and this good. I think that's really important. But still, even every competition, I can take a point from the competition which didn't go well even if I won the whole competition I can say when we do some video analysis and I look back I can say okay this 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 was really good however this was not as good so what can I do to make that as good as this to be a better person as like a whole judo player so I think it's super important not to forget how well you did and to go into the sessions really confident because you've just done so well um but just have a look back at your match or how you played and say okay there was five points that were super good but this one point now I'm going to work on that to get it as good and then you'll be a better player as a whole yeah definitely um that was really useful I think I have I have a habit of either mainly because all our competitions if we do a full weekend it's first match is normally at 9am on a Sunday and the way that timetabling has been it's normally about four or five on the Sunday and then I'll be straight back at school the next day. So for school games, I would have played for four days straight. And then I, it's my first day of year 13 the next day. Oh, wow. Um, how, how did you, if you did have to deal with that, how did you deal with that when you were younger? So I did all the time. So I would compete on Saturdays or Sundays and then go straight to school on a Monday. And I think... I had really supportive people around me and people in school with me and college in me that they was really happy for me. So like they'd be every time I'd go in and I wouldn't be scared to like share how well I did. Like I'd say, yeah, I won this. Yeah, I did good. Like I think sometimes people think, oh, you may be being big headed or you're boasting, but that isn't actually how people see it. People see it people get really proud of you and are genuinely really happy for you to do well. So I think you should go in and show off your medals or show off your trophy. And just, if you're really proud of yourself, everyone around will also be really proud, but then you need to make sure you can switch off a little bit from that to focus on your studies or whatever you're doing. And then as soon as you go back into training, that's where you can say, I did good. And now I'm going to focus on this. Yeah, definitely. Um, I don't think I have any more questions apart from kind of what is the favourite thing you've ever bought to help with your sport? Because I like asking people this question because it's so random. What's my favourite thing I've ever like, bought for your sport? Like if it's random or you just liked it. What have I bought for my sport? Hmm, that's a good question. I... Well, actually, I'm obsessed with buying trainers. Like, trainers is my go-to. So I cheat a little bit and I say, oh, I need trainers for the gym. Oh, now I need trainers for running. But I don't wear them for the gym and running because I have my gym and running trainers and I just make an excuse. So that is the thing that, like, my go-to thing, really. What about you? Kind of trainers, yeah, and I have my one pair of trainers that I play in and I go to the gym in and they've had a hard life, bless them, but they work. <laughs> um, 
probably I do I don't really follow running basketball uh so a lot of wheelchair basketball players do follow the running game yeah. um, I officiate it but I, I don't watch it but football shirts I say oh, oh, no. oh no um and then I just buy a lot of <laughs> that's really cool though um, I like that which is yeah that's pretty um, cool yeah did you watch the line lesson yes how amazing yeah it was so cool um I was in France I watched it with the, the English and French uh, the English and German people who were in that bit of oh. Very nice. Well, they did so well. And then the week after, our Commonwealth team did so well. So at the minute, like, everyone's on a high. It's that sport's really good. So hopefully that follows you into the, the games. Yeah, hopefully. Um, I knew some of the people who, who represented England at wheelchair basketball. So wow. I played with one of them. This, I've played with two of them this season, I think. Um, I'll be playing with them at the games. So I think hopefully it'll be such a high for the country and the sporting world. Um, and even if I, other people don't see it, I think for the, the sporting world, it's been such a high and it's been one of the times it's been really good to be English. So, a hundred percent. Yeah, ho hopefully. So my fingers are crossed that you have a very, very good games. But I want you just to remember that if things maybe don't go too much to plan or not how you expected, there's more things to come and there's bigger things to come as well. So don't dwell on it too much, but fingers crossed everything goes very, very well for you. Thank you so much. Uh, this is my pleasure.